Um, now I'm able to hand it over to the lovely Helen, who will be um, facilitating um, our leadership in a time of change panel discussion. So he mihi nui nui na watu kia koutou ngā rangatira i, um, i haramai um, ki te tohaina o koutou kōrero i tēnei wā. Tēnā koutou. Kia ora. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa, everybody. We're really delighted to welcome our Glammy panel to talk about leadership in a time of change. Um, the channel will be discussing their leadership approaches and how these have changed during this very tumultuous and unusual year. Um, before we start, um, just a little quick note on housekeeping. Um, if you don't mind staying on mute and um, just like with the AGM, pop any questions you've got in the chat. Um, anyone who's still here that didn't put their um, name and library in the chat for the minutes um, to mark themselves present, we'd really appreciate that to make our lives a lot easier. Um, so any questions that you have, pop them in the chat and um, we'll be um, reading through those. Anna will be checking those as we go along. We're recording this event and we'll be sharing it um, later on the Lianza YouTube channel. So um, hopefully this event won't go much over time, um, but if you need to leave, um, we understand. Um, we hope you can stay to the end. Um, please do. <laughs> So um, Anahir is going to lead us in a karakia um, before we begin. Tērā te mauri kei te kahu o te rangi, kei te tihi o ngā maunga whakahi o Aotearoa, kei te, mai, ko te mauri kei au, kei tēnei uri, ko tū ki taha matau, ko rongo ki taha maui, he kauhanga, he putanga. Ko tēnei te mauri katau, ki tēnei kāinga, ki tēnei whānau, he mauri tū, he mauri ora, kā ora, tūturu haka maua kia tīna, tīna, huie, huie, tāhi. So, um, Warm, warm welcome to Courtney Johnson um, from Te Papa, Dan Daly from Christchurch Community Libraries, and Honiana Love from Ngā Tonga Sound and Vision. Um, I'm hoping that um, you can, um, the three of you can put on, unmute yourselves. Um, and if you don't mind, just very briefly um, saying hello and, and just a brief introduction before we start with the questions. Who's starting? Can I start? <laughs> uh, tēnā tātou, tēnā te mai iati ki a koutou, tēnā i ahi ahi pō. Um, ko Honiana Love tōku ingoa, hauri au no Taranaki maunga. Um, so my name's Honiana Love. I'm uh, a descendant from the people from Taranaki uh, and, of course, the um, CE at um, Ngā Taonga Sound and Vision. I've been uh, in the role for... Um, for about 18 months, six months permanently, and, and about six months acting. Kia ora. Kia ora. I'll jump in before Dan does then. Um, kia ora, everyone. Ko Courtney Johnston, toko ingoa. Ko au te tumu whakarai o te papa. Um, my name's Courtney Johnston. I'm the uh, tumu whakarai or chief executive at te papa. I've been in the role since the 20th of December um, and I'd also like to say thank you to the National Library for um, hosting me this evening. I'm I'm dialing in, Honiana and I are separated by a floor and we've both just been at the um, the Digital Pacific uh, website launch as well so I'm feeling, um, I'm an ex-National Library person and I'm feeling very embraced by my libraryness this evening. <laughs> Kia ora. Uh, kia ora koutou katoa everybody. Um, my name is Dan Daly and I am I hail originally from the UK. I'm a, a 19 year old Kiwi now. So um, that sort of belays my age a little bit. Um, and been in Christchurch City Libraries down here in Otatahi Christchurch for 11 years now. So um, a good bank of experience here. And thank you very much for the invitation. It's great to be here and to share some time with you, Courtney and you, Honiana. Thank you. Kia ora. Kia ora. 
Thank you, three. Um, well, I think we'll just jump straight in with the um, the first question, so we don't muck around any longer <laughs> than we need to. So, really, um, the, our big burning question is is to the three of you: um, Have your leadership approaches changed this year? And and if so, how? And and we're hoping that maybe you might have some sort of real specific um, chewy responses for us. Um, shall we start with uh, Courtney? Oh, kia ora. Um, so I guess I started in the role um, on the 6th of January and I was a, I'm was a chief executive for the first time. So I always anticipated that this year I was going to be making it up, um, you know, to, to in the frankest possible way, I didn't know what I was doing and I, I was going to be figuring it out along the ways. And um, so no one expects a global pandemic apart from the people whose job it is to predict it. And they saw it coming and they tried to tell us. Uh, this year was always going to be about recovery and resetting direction at Papa anyway. We had had um, a series of, of well-documented and quite bruising um, restructures, plus heaps of effort over the last uh, two or three years with major exhibition renewals, the biggest projects that we've undertaken since reopening. So, um, uh, since opening in 1998. So I feel... I feel like I had three months of honeymoon and um, and I was feeling my way in and I was resetting to Papa um, in the eyes of um, of our staff themselves um, and of our board and of the public and of our key stakeholders. Um, and I also, as an internal applicant, had to reset myself and my leadership team as well and go through that kind of um, transition. And... So it was in some ways a big relationship building campaign um, that I started the year on. And, and I think a lot of us had these um, hopes and dreams for 2020 um, that were all in place coming out of that summer. And then, then this all happened. And so I guess one of the things I found was that my world went from being this big new exploratory place, including this big growth of myself into this new role, to being extremely, um, both incredibly ambiguous, but completely focused as well. And so our entire focus became around the well-being of our staff and how to keep our people and our collections healthy and whole through this time. And at that point, we had no idea how long that was going to be for. So a big part of my energy went from the start of the year being very externally focused to being all about monitoring and planning and communicating at quite a microscopic level. And that's probably not what I expected. Um, and it was all a bit of a blur looking back, but one of the things that I take out of it is um, the collateral benefit of, of this whole time, which for Te Papa was around a, a, a whole organisation wide, over 560 people emphasis on looking after each other and people looking after their teams. And that was a message I think, COVID or not, we badly needed um, anyway. So I think um, in terms of the healing that Te Papa needed to do, um, that that was probably on my mind already, but it was it became it happened in response to a really different external stimulus in a in a situation that we were all facing. And where we're at now, I think, um, is that feeling that um, we lost a big chunk of 2020 and whatever time is in this year, this kind of squirrely, squishy concept of time. Um, when we were meant to be building momentum, we got diverted into a crisis. We're sort of coming back on stream now, um, but we're all really tired and we're kind of groggy. Um, so I think one of the main things that I've thought about in terms of leadership this year is, is just about people's well-being, people's energy, the need to talk incredibly frankly about mental health and anxiety, um, and being um, much more vulnerable and open much faster than I probably normally would have been going into a leadership role, um, being quite a lot more raw than I think I would have been otherwise. That's casting back to the beginning of the year and seeing where we are now. I think that's probably the, the biggest diversion that mm. I've taken personally. Oh, thanks, Courtney. <laughs> well, Juliana, how does that compare to your experience? I think I think you know um, this has been such a strange time to come into a leadership role, and I had six months of sort of uh, not knowing who you know caretaking the role for for possibly for someone else, 
and then um, applying for the job and going through that process and being appointed uh, and that happening around about the same time as Courtney got appointed to her role. Uh, and again, heading into the new year with big plans, big plans about what we were going to do. And uh, then COVID and we had to one, change our organisation a completely different way of working um, for we didn't know how long. Um, and, um, and secondly, really um, do a lot of reflection on whether what we were doing in terms of changing the organization and heading in quite a, um, not a new direction, but just, just speeding up our move towards being a digital organization, um, thinking about how we share our collections uh, the the level of uncertainty through that period um, from March until June uh, was huge, and we were, we did a lot of checking in with ourselves to see should we still be trying to do this, or is actually have we bitten off more than we can chew? Um, and uh, you know uh, we weren't sure whether we were going to get our budget bids, and then we did get our budget bid, and that meant that suddenly we were going from an organisation that was managing seven to eight million dollars. Uh, a year to uh, having a project that had $30 million attached to it and, you know, was uh, the biggest digitization project ever undertaken in Aotearoa. And um, suddenly we've, you know, we've got, it's, it's overwhelming the amount of uh, things we've got to do, but to be able to achieve those, we've got to keep going on this program. So, you know, our commitment to, to doing this program became even more urgent. And um, some of you will know that we've just going through a, a restructure, which is really difficult on people. Um, and uh, it, it felt like the, you know, was this the right time to do it? But in the end, it, it's, are we, are we prepared for the future? And if we didn't do it now, when were we going to do it? And so it was just basically having to get on with things that were difficult when there were other difficult things piling on top and I, I can just, the end of the year just is just looking, um, you know, so big, so, so close, but still so far away. And though somebody did say to me the other day, or I think I saw it on a meme was, um, when you're thinking 2020 was bad, just remember that Mad Max was said in 2021. <laughs> Uh, I think we're all experiencing that sort of weird, timey-wimey stuff that's happening this year. Uh, how about you, Dan? What would you like to add? Well, I think my, my perspective, um, just to set it out, I probably come at it at a different level to both you, Courtney, and you, Oniana. So you're very much the strategic level in terms of that leadership. And it sounds, listening to you, as though you've come down uh, really to get involved in the operational, which is where my level really sits, so I'm very much operational. I think for me, um, I'm a, I'm a values-driven leader. I always have been. I've been in leadership roles for nearly 20 years now. And I guess, you know, in answering your question, has my leadership approach changed this year? Probably not, no. I, th I think I'm pretty, pretty established in terms of who I am as a leader. I see, always have seen myself and continue to see myself as accountable, not just to my boss, we all have a boss, but I also see myself equally accountable to my team. So I see myself as having two managers in a sense, really. Um, I think I, I, for better or worse, I do like a bit of dysfunction. I like managing change. I like managing things when there's dysfunction that's going on. So it tends to bring out the best in me. And I was fortunate in a sense to be here after the earthquakes so I could foresee probably um, that we were going to have a period where everybody's engagement was going to go up because that immediate response to a crisis you know we're all like right let's pitch in let's fix this let's make a difference what can we do and then really the types of things that you were alluding to Courtney is exactly the train that I jumped on with the you know you get that dip where people's um, resilience starts to flag their their mental health their emotional state starts to deteriorate and and that's those are the sorts of things for me as a leader that are extremely value driven and i i really protect those and um provide a lot of outreach for my team in terms of that well-being for mental health emotional health and 
um, you know, how people manage their resilience. So it was really for me just going back and thinking, right, in an operational sense, divorced from the strategic and the operational sense, what can I control realistically to help manage my team to give them what they need? So it's very practical things that I was able to do, um, particularly around providing contingency plans, particularly around the communication that was offered, how frequently the communication came out, what did people want to hear? And, you know, it's really important to me to say explicitly to my team, how are you doing today? I'm just touching base with you. I haven't had any news. There's no, there's no big update that I can give you today, but actually just filling that void so that people weren't left guessing because when you have that vacuum, you know, experience tells me that that's when people fill that void with their own assumptions, which when we're going through a period like we are now, they're usually worst case scenarios. So it's just kind of, you know, feeling for the, feeling for the sides with, um, with that kind of philosophy, really. Mm, great. Yeah, that's really practical and sensible. Um, when we were um, preparing for this talk, we were talking about um, um, initiative, flexibility, empathy, resilience, um, and I was wondering if you could each sort of talk a little bit about um, sort of one of those aspects and and how um, you might demonstrate it and what that might look like coming from a leader, well, at least from yourself as a leader. Um, Honiana, do you want to start? Sure, I'll give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I, I think um, that... Uh, one of one of the things that you, um, has been talked about a bit is um, the the communication, and I think it's about building communication and trust with the team. And I, I wouldn't have taken this job in the first place if I didn't feel that I had a team around me who could support me. And in particular, I think about my leadership team. Um, so some of the things that we uh, did really early on, uh, particularly around COVID, was. Uh, just really upping our communications. It had been one of the things that had been coming through in our engagement surveys that they didn't feel like we were communicating enough. And so um, just really trying to up the amount of communication we're doing and using the, that model that, you know, if you've got a message um, seven times in seven different ways is the, is the way that it gets through. So um, we, there was a lot of a lot of planning and thinking about how do we how do we be better communicators but also I think one of the really important lessons for me was how do you make sure that communication's two-way and the only way to do that is to build trust um, and I think that you know the, this is a, the difficulty of going through a restructure is um, it, it, there is um, a, a real sense that uh, that you can really break trust and it's something that you have to spend a lot of time rebuilding and building on and I think that um, you know this is um, this is something that we're going to really have to focus on in the next year as well as is, is you you can do things in extraordinary times but it's actually carrying them through into the ordinary times in the day-to-day -day. how do you keep making sure that you're talking, that you're open to what other people are saying, that you're hearing the feedback um, and, and that you're responding to that appropriately. So I think that th th that's the big thing for me. Dan, how about you? Yeah, that, that really resonated with me, Honiana, the, the, what you talked about with communication. I, you know, communication for me is one of the things that I pride myself on. And I don't think you can ever take communication for granted or be complacent about it. So, you know, that, that really resonated with me. So kia ora for that. Um, you asked us to um, come back with one, uh, one out of the list of four there, Helen, but I'm going to be a bit cheeky. I'm going to pinch two. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to say resilience. I'll talk about how, um, you know, how we've built resilience and what does that look like. But for me, I just want to be really clear to say that building resilience is important and doing it with empathy is absolutely achievable and critically important. And, and what I mean by that is when we're in a, a scenario like we are now, if we say, 
okay, team, we need to build resilience. We need to be more resilient. It sounds quite confronting and it, it sounds like, a, right, you've just got to get on. You've got to suck it up and get on with it. So it's a, it's a bit of an ultimatum. It could be interpreted as an ultimatum if you don't do it rightly. So doing it with empathy. And I think, again, going back to your points, Courtney, it, appreciating people's mental health and emotional health and well-being when we're talking about resilience is really, really important. And then if you do that, you're, you're clearly communicating to your team that you're building resilience, but you're doing it with their best interests at heart. You're doing it with sincerity. And really, I thought, what do we need to do to make ourselves more resilient? Because we all know this, was, this is going to go on for a long period of time. And so I, I thought long and hard about that. And for me, it was about making things achievable for my team actually breaking things down, breaking big things down into small things and so that they could have a sense of, okay, we can be successful, we can achieve things and, and we are actually able to, to do our job and we are able to contribute to our communities and our customers um, and really providing them with the tools to do that. So that might be time, it might be giving them extra space, it might be giving them more time because people are processing things a little slower as their resilience is a little bit lower and another thing for me was really putting things into perspective because you know we in our industry I think pretty much by and large you know 99% of us are here because we want to help we want to achieve things and we want to make things better for our communities and our public and inherently the risk in there is that we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and that we have high expectation on ourselves. And so giving my team perspective in what we're trying to achieve, given the circumstances we're in, is really important. And actually getting them to stop, be kind to themselves, give themselves permission to take longer to do things, but to do it right, to give people the okay to say, look, if you don't feel like you can achieve this today because it's a bridge too far, because you're having, um, you're having a hard time, that's okay. Other people are too. And again, something of what you were saying, Courtney, with being vulnerable, offering up that vulnerability and just saying, look, team, I feel exactly the same as you. And these are some of the things that I've done to manage myself. Um, and really then celebrating those wins because we are, again, inherently, I think we don't give ourselves credit for what we do. And when we do something really well, when I say to my team, that was great, you, you had a really good outcome there, they will just sort of look a standard and say, well, I was just doing my job. But actually saying, no, that was really important. And this is why it was important. And this is the outcome that that customer or those customers had because of what you did. And really celebrating those wins just Bring, just built in those building blocks which people can be proud of and that that in itself gives you a little bit of fuel to add to add to resilience so those are some of the things that we tried to do it with our team here mm, fantastic Courtney would you like to yeah I feel um I feel like I'm part of a three-part choir and we're <laughs> perfectly in harmony <laughs> um and I also feel like reflecting on this I'm so grateful that I was brought up inside of libraries and museums as a profession, because I think to your point, Dan, um, I've thought a long time about us as part of the caring professions and we might not care for people's physical well-being, but we're a profession that's acutely aware of the care that we're taking of people's history and their culture and the, the connections and materials and tāonga that feed identity and knowledge of ourselves. And, and we do place um, a lot of pressure on ourselves to meet those expectations um, of the public. And so it's always that balance because the meaning that drives our work is also the thing that can drive us into the ground a little bit if we're not careful around that. Um, so I was gonna share um, four really, really concrete things really quickly that um, as a person who um, uh, has never had to really monitor my mental health uh, in any way this year. So four things that have um, helped me and I've had to learn for myself. First one, uh, at the beginning of lockdown, I Googled how to communicate in a crisis. 
because <laughs> that's what you do. Um, and, and the piece of really great advice that I found was about um, communicating from your highest point of clarity. So explain what you can say for sure. Um, and then say, there are these things and I don't know the answer yet, but when I do, I will share that with you. And it's, it's about trying to manage that um, management is keeping things from us, you know, and this year we've seen that spread out wide to the government is keeping things from us. It's a very human uh, instinct when you are stressed. So that was one thing. Um, I've used, I've shared this with my, my staff. I shared it um, in one of my weekly emails and in one of our staff briefings as well, this little three word thing, I'll type it into the chat. I do called, um, when I when I clicked back up, called uh, Notice Name Navigate. Um, so something's going on and I can feel myself physically and mentally responding to it. So taking that moment to notice what's happening and then try to put a name to it at, because naming things is how we get that little bit of distance between us and the feeling and then when I've figured out what's going on then making a choice about how to navigate through that situation so notice name navigate I've used that quite a lot just to try to slow myself down from feeling that need to immediately solve what's in front of me um, a change we made from about June um, after a little bit of coaching as a leadership team because uh, we all we got disrupted we knew we had to rebuild as a leadership team, but we got thrown into crisis management, not lead, and it's very hard to build as a team when you're managing a crisis. But we now, every time our leadership team is together, we start our meetings uh, with a 15 to 20 minute check-in where everyone talks about how they've felt coming into the room that day and what we need from each other um, to get through. Um, or, and that's led to a lot of honesty and a lot of sharing and a lot of connection. And occasionally when we have people from other parts of the museum in it, some surprised faces. Um, but it's really great what that's, what that's done to remember that we all bring our outside lives into meetings and into the way that we're behaving. And then finally, I've been working with an amazing mentor um, who actually has a connection to the sector uh, this year. And uh, the, the last time I met with her, she said to me, um, I'm hearing a lot of, I have to, I must, I've got to. Um, and she said, my recommendation to you is that you find a small selfish pleasure just for yourself inside your job, probably something you shouldn't be doing and make the time to do that, to consciously find the joy inside your job and not feel guilty about not meeting all the needs that you see around you. And that that piece of advice has um, made over the last two months just a world of difference to me. I, I now do a couple of hours a week down in our botany collection, um, laying out specimens, which is probably a terrible use of my time, but all the benefit and value I get from doing it, it's, uh, it's probably been the thing that's kept me going through this quarter of the year. That's <laughs> um, the three of you have been incredibly um, open and honest and and sharing um, tonight, and I, I think that I'm going to want to go through and watch the recording again so that I can um, take it all in again. Um, I've I've asked for any questions, um, and and haven't seen any come in yet. But if anyone has got any burning questions that they want to ask, quick quick drop them in the chat now. Um, Otherwise, um, while we're waiting, is there is there anything that the three of you want to to add or respond to? I think um, I think what I'd just like to say, which is what I'm trying to say to my peers when I'm meeting with them, is that you know the fact that everybody is here tonight at half past seven and we're engaged in this conversation. Everybody is here because of the best of intentions and you want to make a difference and I just would I would just like to say to everybody you're all doing without missing you I can tell you're all doing amazingly well you're doing incredibly well and to be here at this time of night to be engaged in this conversation just shows that so just be proud of what you're doing and how hard you're working and 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 the resilience that you're showing and just reach out to people just just always use other people as, as support because you'll find that others are experiencing the same thing as you and um yeah be 
look for those little wins and be, be proud of what you're doing. Kia ora. Um, I, I suppose I would just like to um, add, uh, and it's really a shout out to particularly to National Library, but also Archives New Zealand, um, for from a Ngatong perspective, how the difference it's made being down here in the heritage uh, sector um, and working also with Courtney. So the, the, um, the closeness of our heritage organisations are helping us grow up through a time where we're ha having a lot of change. So uh, I, I noticed in there a, a question from Rachel around um, professional membership. And I think that for, for me, that's one of the things that uh, I think professional memberships bring. It, it's about um, growing up as an individual into your profession, but also growing up as a profession. And I think that from uh, the perspective of Ngā Taonga becoming um, truly archivists and truly thinking about how we care for our collection in a way that, uh, that meets a real professional standard uh, is really important for us and um, for our, the archivists that work with us. So, um, you know, a, a, a huge mihi to uh, National Library and, uh, and the Alexander Turnbull, along with Archives New Zealand and to Papa who have embraced us over the last year in particular. Kia ora. Um, on professional memberships, I'd just say um, the work that Museums Aotearoa has done this year to advocate for, to collect together information from the sector and to pass that through um, to ministers and to the Ministry of Culture and Heritage has been really um, invaluable having, um, oh, someone's kittens typing into the chat, that's adorable. Um, it's been, um, that's, that's made a huge difference, but I've got to say one of the joys for me this year, and apologies, Dan, because I've just met you and I reckon I'd love you too, but um, working with Honiana, Bill and Richard this year, and, and especially because we sit in different ministries, but we've been able to, um, through all those endless Zooms, connect across and influence across has just been, um, Honiana's talked about it as growing up inside of this, and it's felt like that. It's felt like this little protective shelter that um, even when one of us is getting blown around a bit, there's, there's some support in it. So I think profesh the professions have been so important and so understanding this year. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely been a time for, for support, peer support and association support. Yeah. Well, on that note, I am going to hand back over to Anna Hedda. Kuhui <laughs> So in some of those things, you know, you've brought up a lot of things around, you know, how are our people and our organisations, are we resilient, are we prepared for the future? Are we fully reliant upon lessons learned and is, it, is that going to be too late for us? What are some of the practical things that are needed to support each other, proper communication, and of course that's always key, and contact with others. Um, which also reminds me of that, of money who you been at, you know, kote kaya te rangatira he kōrero. So sustenance of leaders is about eloquence. And when you're able to actually achieve that, you actually do achieve a harmony within your grouping. So the similarities that you've all bought in your whakaaro, um, even though you work in different areas of whare taonga, um, gave us a, a harmonic melody. I like that one about you all having your harmonies a harmonic melody on the way forward for us and navigating the pathway ahead of us, um, reminding us also to take the time out for yourself. So our connections, our collaboration and the consideration for the future um, and what that means, not just um, now, but also into the future and for our future generations and in our succession planning. Making sure that we take care of each other is, is very key. So thank you again. Um, our panelists for sharing your insights, your honesty, um, 
it was really nice. It was really, really eye-opening. And for a person that's been up since 4.30 because of F45, I wasn't asleep. So that's me. So um, it te whānau tu whiti a te hopo ma um, mai rangatia te angi tū. Kāore e wehi tōku kiri i te ta, taraonga o ngā nō reira kia kaha tonu tātou ka toa ka maro tiritiri tonu te māro te mā tauranga ka mai a ngā hua nō reira mā ku e whakapakapi tō tātou hi, hui nei. Um, tēnei au ka te, ko te uri o manu manu, ko te aitanga tiki, he matakahi, he mānuka, he kāhika. I ahu mai i te kōhanga tapu tapu ātea. I te whare o te mānuka, i te whare kura o mānuka pua, tēnei au te oho atu nei, hōkai āwai. Whanaringa, hi koe a te whitū, hi koe a te marama, kei te whai au, kei te au marama, haumi, hui e, tai ki. Tai ki. So all these fellows that are having a wine, make sure that if you've got anything to do tomorrow, make sure you get 10 hours sleep before you start driving or anything or even walking down to catch your bus because you might uh, have the wrong time and miss it. Um, for the rest of the whānau, have a wonderful Christmas. Take care of each other, look after each other, and we shall catch up again in many of the many different ways that we're able to. Kia ora, pō mari.